What do you like most about living in a Are you filming? <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to answer your questions um, posed by my lovely girlfriend, Brie Ann. Um, I'm going to try to make them short and sweet, and, but I want to hear your questions. So please do me a favor, uh, leave your comment, leave your questions. I'm happy to answer nearly anything, no matter how personal, about tiny house living, tiny house life. And I want to hear what you want to know. Um, and I'll make another video responding to those questions. So uh, leave your comment, give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into the questions. What type of tiny house do you have? Okay, what type of tiny house do I have? A few ways to answer that one. One is by dimensions, uh, but I'll say, first of all, it is a tiny house on wheels. So I bought a trailer, a 24 foot trailer with a double axle. Each axle supports 7,000 pounds. So I could have in theory up to a 14,000 pound house. And I do, I took it right to the, the limit. So it's a 24 foot trailer, but I built over the tongue just a little bit, making it a, about a 25 and a half feet long trailer, like I said, double axle with two lofts. You probably just saw that in the previous video. Um, and it's totally portable, but it does take a big truck like a dually or an F-350 of some sort uh, because of the weight. So it's not easily portable, uh, but it, it is mobile. How big is your tiny house? Okay, so how big is the tiny house? I just mentioned its length. It's a 24 foot trailer, but if I measure wall to wall from my kitchen wall to my bathroom wall, it's actually closer to 25 and a half feet because I have a little bump out to accommodate the big bathtub in the bathroom. And I'm glad I did that. And I recommend that anyone else do that too if you don't need a lot of space on the tongue. It's eight and a half feet wide, which is the, le the widest you can legally have on you know, America's roads without having to get a wide load certificate or an escort or anything like that. So the outside dimensions are eight and a half, but then on the inside, once you subtract for wall thickness and things like that, it's closer to about seven foot nine or so, seven foot eight, something like that on the inside. And then I built this in Idaho, which is kind of the whole Pacific Northwest region. And there you can go up to, I think it's 14 feet um, in height without being a problem. Um, other states, you can only go up to 13.2, but I thought I was gonna stay up in that region. So I went almost to 14 feet to the top edge of the skylights at the roof to the, the very road level. It's actually about 13 feet, 10 inches. And those few extra inches, you know, those eight extra inches over what most people do actually does make a big difference and gives you a lot more headroom in your lofts. But yes, you have to be very aware of, you know, overpass heights when you're moving a tiny house. So I would recommend for most people stick with the 13.2 in height or even shorter. I don't recommend going with 14 feet or, or close to it, but you can. And that's what I did. Did you hire a builder? Did I hire a builder? I did not. Um, I did get some help in certain specialty trades like plumbing and electrical, um, but I wanted the challenge of doing this myself. I did have some friends from a tiny house meetup group up in Boise, Idaho, help me with some of the smaller tasks, a little bit of the framing on the first day. I did have help um, coming up with a design or some specifics for my design by using SketchUp. So I had a friend who was a SketchUp expert helped with that. I did hire an electrician to help me actually do this panel box that's up here and do some of the basic AC wiring, um, but most of the outlets and everything I did myself, but the actual punching down in this box I had help with. And I also had help with the plumbing system because plumbing is very specific. You don't want to mess it up because if there's leaks and those pipes are in your walls, you're going to get moldy you know, walls. So you got to make sure you do the plumbing right. So for me, I basically subbed out most of those two things, but I looked over the guy's shoulders, guy's shoulders so I could learn as much as possible. And but all the rest of it, I built myself using mostly salvaged material. Um, and it was totally worth it. It was a lot of work, but totally worth it. And I recommend if you think you may be able to develop the skills or you're inclined to build yourself, I say go for it. You know, if you hire it out to someone else, you're going to pay a lot more money, double or triple um, what you could pay or invest if you do it yourself. So I recommend you do it yourself. How long did it take you to build? 
How long did it take me to build this tiny house? A long time. Um, end to end between the day I bought my trailer and the day I hit the road and brought the in uh, brought this trailer to Dallas and started living in it full time was almost a three year process. Now it definitely doesn't have to take that long, but I was working on it mostly on weekends, sometimes at nights, and you know when there was a three or four day weekend and I could take some time off from work. I would work on it 12 hours a day for three or four days straight, but I did have big breaks. I also had to break to save up money to buy more materials because I did not want to go in debt for this tiny house at all. So I was big on using used materials. I scoured Craigslist. I found, I went to Habitat for Humanity's resale store, um, but it was expensive. So I needed to save up money. So that added to the delay. It didn't need to take three years, but you know, as a part-time gig and wanting to go slow and do it right, three years. How much did it cost to build? How much did the tiny house cost to build? It's a little difficult to answer that because with houses, they're never really done. You can always find more to do, and that's still true. This house is not complete. But I will tell you that I paid about $4,500 for the trailer. If I don't include gas or transportation or, or the purchase of tools that I had to purchase, I basically invested about another $15,000 into building materials, windows, doors, fixtures, you know, lights, faucets, plywood, all that type of stuff. So to get the tiny house to the point where it's livable, it's about a $20,000 investment. But since then, with adding on a deck and putting in some furniture and buying, you know, a refrigerator and just lots of, you know, little upgrades and things like that, um, I'm probably into it now, three or four years later, for closer to $30,000. But I think when I calculated it the first time and said, okay, this thing is livable, it's usable, I was only at like $17,500. So if you get salvage materials or gifted materials from people, you can do a, a tiny house pretty affordably. How did you find a place to park it? How did I find a place to park this tiny house? You know, that is one of the single biggest concerns and obstacles for people who want to build their own tiny house. 90% of people in my experience from, from running a tiny house meetup group for a few years up in Idaho is people do not want to start a tiny house if they don't know where they're gonna park it. And I would say, just a piece of advice, start anyway. You will find a place to park it unless you live in like the most restrictive county in the country like Washington DC or something like that but if you're resourceful and you're sociable and you you know come across as a nice honest person to people you'll find a place to park it the way I did it was simply put a tiny house parking ad on Craigslist and it said tiny house parking wanted and I included in the ad a little bit of information about me and my situation and my profession I included a few pictures of the tiny house and I said, if you have, you know, a, an acre of land or a farm or, you know, a big backyard and you're willing to and you want to make some extra money every month, um, let's talk. And within a day, I had the perfect situation show up and uh, it's all worked out fantastically. I'm, I'm renting a small piece of land, someone's side yard, basically, on one acre. And it's 20 minutes from downtown Dallas, but rural enough so that I have plenty of space and views and see the trees and nature and I don't feel like I'm in a city and it's very affordable so don't worry about the parking issue you'll find it if you work at it are you able to move your house am I able to move my house yes and no as I mentioned it is um, a tiny house on wheels so it is mobile however because of the size of almost 14 feet tall and the weight of about 14,000 pounds, it does take a very significant vehicle to move it. So I actually bought an F-350, an older Ford F-350 dually. I think if you're pulling a house this size, it is important to have those dual rear wheels for safety in case you get a blowout. You don't end up in a ditch with a flipped over house. So I bought the dually. I kept it for a couple of years, but then I sold it. So now that I've sold it and I'm gonna be taking this house out to Arizona, I have to figure out how to do that. And the best way in my experience to do that is just to hire a tow truck operator, a tow truck driver. 
um, and pay might, you know, to move across the country, it might cost you a couple of few thousand dollars. But to me, if you're only going to do that once a decade or, you know, not very often, better to pay that fee than to own a, a second vehicle, a dually, you know, a diesel truck like that that has very high maintenance and expenses in general. So yes, it's movable, but also um, because it's connected to plumbing, to a septic system, and to electrical, it's kind of hardwired. My panel here is hardwired into a sub panel on my landlord's house. Um, so it would take a little bit to you know disconnect the systems from the house and get it roadworthy. I have to take down a fence actually that's kind of blocking my egress. Um, but that's the plan. I'm going to take down the fence and hire a tow truck driver and replace the tires first. But um, and I'm taking it to Arizona and I did some research. It's going to cost me between twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars. But uh, it's totally movable. But it's not something I do often or you know uh, on a whim because it's just so large. But you have moved it yourself before. Yes, I have moved it myself before with my dually. I drove. I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know about anti-sway hitches or weight distribution hitches. I'd never really pulled anything in my life, but I bumper pulled this 14,000 pound behemoth of a tiny house uh, all the way from Boise, Idaho to the Dallas area, which is, I don't know, 1,800 miles or something like that, maybe 1,500. Um, and it was sketchy, it was nerve wracking. And I got a flat tire in the last 30 miles that um, I had had the foresight to buy the biggest um, mechanics jack, like a floor jack, um, that I could find. And it was expensive, but it gave me the ability to jack up the, the tiny house, take off a tire, to fix the flat, and I got it um, on site here to the Dallas area without any real issue. So yeah, you can move it yourself. I did. How much does it cost to live in your tiny house? How much does it cost to live in my tiny house? Right now, about $460 per month. It was a little cheaper when I first moved here, uh, but I negotiated with my landlord to, to raise um, the rent a little bit. It started at 300, then it went to 400, and the utilities, um, due to inflation and other factors, utility costs have gone up quite a bit, and I pull a lot of power here at this house. So my grand total most months is $460, and considering you know most apartments rent for 1200 or so, uh, or more, that's actually pretty affordable, which I, I really like. So it's been very helpful. What type of utilities do you have? Um, the only thing I pay for is power, which it's actually my landlord's power bill. And there's actually a couple other people on this property that are renting space from him uh, with RVs, but they're well hidden and I don't see them very often. So all four of us on this property share an electric bill. And he just tells me what my portion of it is, which ranges from 25 to $60 a month. Occasionally I help him out with the septic tank, pumping that out. Um, and internet, I have line of sight wireless internet, which is high speed internet, but it, I've got a, a, a dish on my landlord's roof that points to a nearby cell tower for high speed internet. And that costs me $80 a month. What do you do for storage? What do I do for storage? Um, that's a great question because honestly, living in a tiny house, uh, storage is one of the number one challenges. If you're a minimalist and you don't have a lot of stuff and you're a single person and you can keep it you know, to a minimum, then just the cabinetry, you know, I have storage under my stairs. I have storage cabinets over my head right now. I have an extra loft that my son uses when he's here, but that's not very much. So um, I can use that for storage. But because I've had multiple vehicles and I have a lot of hobbies that involve power tools, um, and I just have a lot of interest in general, I have a lot of stuff. And so I've got two main things that I, I built to help me with that. One is a covered carport, like a lean-to carport to get my truck out of the elements. Because here in Dallas, we get hail and pretty you know nasty storms. So you need to protect your vehicle. So I built a carport and in that carport, I can store you know a fair amount of stuff. It's not completely out of the elements, but it's not getting direct rain on it. I also built about a six by six storage shed right outside that I keep some of the bulkier items in. Um, I also, out back behind the house, I had actually built two big wood plywood boxes with sort of hinged up um, lids. And those worked out pretty well to keep things like house fans and you know tarps and just big, you know, kind of bulkier things. But eventually, because of the rain and the roof slope, the rain runoff was too much out there and things started to get moldy. So I got rid of those two boxes and that's when I built the shed. 
and that's worked out pretty well and I do have a big deck on the tiny house you know temporarily I can keep things you know uh, for a weekend or for a week or so out on the deck until eventually I move them into somewhat more permanent storage so that is a challenge it is a concern if you're a person who already has like a, a two-car garage and it's full of tools wherever you move your tiny house to you will need to plan for either having access to a garage or building a garage or in some cases you can rent a storage space for 50 to 100 dollars a month but i don't really, really recommend that i like solutions where you're not just paying you know rent month after month with nothing to show for it so i think building a shed is a, is a better solution for that do you ever feel like you don't have enough space do i ever feel like i don't have enough space absolutely and again it goes back to being the kind of guy who has power tools um, table saws i have a big wood stove an antique wood stove that i want to restore i have skateboards and multiple bicycles and a one wheel you know i have toys if i had more space i'd have a stand-up paddle board which would be like a 13 footer so i definitely run out of space and i do a lot of shuffling of things between the bed of my truck the carport the shed the deck and now I have a, a Margo, the cargo trailer, which is kind of my mobile office slash travel trailer. And I do spend a lot of time moving things around, repacking things, restoring things. Um, so that is a challenge, but I think it's worth it overall, uh, you know, given the affordability and the enjoyability of living tiny. It's totally worth it. How do you cook in your tiny house? I eat a lot of bowls of cereal. How do I cook in my tiny house? Um, being a single guy who's, I'm not a foodie, I'm not a chef by any stretch of the imagination, I wanted to keep my kitchen actually pretty small and simple. One of the reasons to make more room for a big bathroom and a big tub. Um, but I have a single burner induction cooktop that just sits up on my counter. I could have easily got a double burner, but I don't often need to cook two things simultaneously. So for boiling water, heating up, you know, sauteing, having a saucepan, uh, you know, for frying things, I use cast iron quite a bit. Um, I really like the durability and the heft of cast iron, you know, pots and pans. And so that works really well on my induction cooktop. Um, so that's like my main source for cooking. I also have a small microwave that sits up on a shelf. You've probably seen that. You know, reheating anything quickly goes in the microwave, reheating coffee, etc. Um, I have a large toaster oven that I use for baking things. I can make, you know, biscuits or I can do a medium sized pizza, a frozen pizza. So I mostly make like breakfast, bacon and eggs in the cast iron, toast and toast in the toaster oven. And then often for lunch and evening meals, I'm microwaving things. And that's really about all I need. I don't have a standard oven or a big range or a vent hood or anything like that. But between toaster oven, microwave, and induction top, I think that's all most people need. Do you have a normal toilet? Do I have a normal toilet? That's actually a really good question because most people don't understand you know, toilet options. Well, there's a lot of options with tiny houses. You can do a normal flushing toilet if you're going to have access to plumbing whether septic tank or city sewer system. You can do a composting toilet, you can do an incinerating toilet, or you can go more primitive and, whoops, you can go more primitive and have some kind of camping toilet or a luggable loo, basically pooping in a bucket and then disposing of that via trash bags, you know, kitty litter, things, sawdust, things like that. I did not know when I built this house where I was gonna park it Therefore, I didn't know what plumbing systems I would have access to, but I knew I wanted a flushing toilet and I found a really good deal on one that I like. So I just took a chance and I installed a normal flushing toilet and it just so happened to work out that when I found, you know, my permanent parking spot um, for this tiny house that it was right over top of a septic tank that was very easy to, to connect into. Now, when I take this house out to Arizona, I'm not gonna have super easy access. I do have a brand new septic system out there but the connection to it is actually quite a distance from where I plan on parking the tiny house. So I either need to have, you know, gravity sloped, you know, drain lines for my toilet all the way to the septic system tie-in, or I'm gonna have to take out the flushing toilet and just put in a composting toilet. And honestly, I haven't figured that out yet. I'm still debating, debating my choices and options, and I'll, I'll let you know when I come to a decision on that one. <laughs> Why did you decide to live in a tiny house? Why did I decide to live in tiny house and build a tiny house myself? 
There were a few major factors in that. I would be lying if I didn't say finances was a huge factor. Um, I was struggling uh, when I started building this with covering the rent on a big house and running my own business and um, child support and a big debt, a past debt for back taxes that I owed the IRS. All of those together were a pretty heavy load. And so I figured if I could reduce my rent to three or $400 a month instead of $1,500 a month, I would you know, be significantly better off. Um, so financial motivations was a big factor. I knew I had to do that if I really wanted to pay off the IRS and not try to you know, write off that debt through bankruptcy or anything like that. I'd already actually done bankruptcy um, years before and I didn't want to go through that again. So I decided to buckle down, build a tiny house as hard as it may be and invest the cash as I could afford to and then live cheap and then just use every cent of extra money to pay down my debts and it worked and I totally got out of debt. So that was a big motivator. The other one is my son at the time, uh, his mother were moving around a little bit and they hadn't picked a, a region of the country to settle down in. And so I knew um, I, I needed to be mobile and tiny house on wheels was one of the better options for that. I could have done some other things like a schoolie or a cargo trailer or a travel trailer but I like building things, so that was certainly a big um, aspect of it. I really wanted the personal challenge of building something like this. And honestly, I've heard from people that the satisfaction of living in something that you built with your own two hands was you know, unmatched, and they're absolutely right. So um, just the pride of, of building your own house to say that I've done that once in my life was also a motivating factor. Um, and also it was just kind of an unusual thing to do and I like to kind of do things a little bit different than most of society and try out some alternative you know lifestyles and living arrangements and so it you know a tiny house on wheels just met all of those needs perfectly. What do you like least about living in your tiny house? When my girlfriend's over and I have to tear up the bathroom and do a stinky one and it's a small space and it's hard to contain that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's not the size. I will say that. I don't mind the size, but the storage is an issue for sure. Um, I'm constantly collecting things, buying new things, and then purging old things um, constantly. So dealing with clutter is a challenge, and that goes hand in hand with storage, right? So you've got to find ways to you know, cleverly store and get things stowed out of the way and keep things organized. So I do spend an incredible amount of time um, working on that. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Keeping it clean is a little bit of a challenge because now I have a dog, uh, Stanley. You probably saw him in one of the previous videos. Um, so he's shedding everywhere. So I'm sweeping a lot. And while it's very fast and easy to sweep a tiny house, you pretty much have to do it every day. Um, and some of the other challenges are unique to my particular tiny house because it has 19 windows and a glass door. So there's a lot of light coming in. So controlling the light level is in the temperature and you know insulation and things like that can be a challenge um, when you have so many windows in your tiny house. Um, and then and sometimes the last thing I'll mention is just narrowness of some of the passageways. When my girlfriend is here or the dog's moving around or all three of us are moving around, sometimes, you know, we're trying to get past each other. And I have an office chair that kind of gets in the way with that a little bit. So sometimes it can be a little bit tight quarters when there's multiple people in the house. But 90% of the time I'm here alone with the dog now and there, there's plenty of room. So I'd say those are the things that I like least. What do you like most about living in a tiny house? Ah, what do I like most? My favorite question. Um, the frugality of it and the simplicity of it. Um, I look at all the houses in the subdivisions around me that are two, 3,000 square feet. There's only a couple people living there. You don't see them really home very much. And it just seems like an incredible amount of waste. It's sort of that American, hmm, uh, you know, bigger is better mentality. And here in Texas, that seems to be true as well. I don't like that. It just seems incredibly wasteful, inefficient, costly. And I think that a lot of people do that because it feeds into ego. And I wanted to opt out of all that. So I really like the simplicity of this that I have as much as I need, but not more. Um, the pride of ownership of having built this myself is definitely a huge one. Um, it's great for conversations when people, I mention I live in a tiny house and they ask, well, what do you mean? I say, well, it's only 200 square feet. You know, that, that's a conversation starter. 
So that's really um, interesting. And overall, I just really, really like, well, two things I'll mention. The hominess of it, especially up in my sleeping loft, it feels like a nest, you know, kind of like a bird's nest. It's small, the ceiling's low, but instead of being cramped, that actually feels really comforting. It feels safe. You feel surrounded by you, your stuff. And it's just, I really like the smallness of it. I'll mention that. And then the final thing I'll mention is the best place to park a tiny house, I think, is in a semi-rural environment. And I have that here. I'm on one acre surrounded by pasture and hay fields. And so I see animals. I've got birds, you know, I've got rabbits. I see coyotes trotting across the back field. There's red-tailed hawks outside. And I've got a deck where I sit outside when the weather's nice for hours on end. I can spend an entire Saturday just sitting, you know, having a beer, enjoying a beer, sitting on the deck, watching nature, and just enjoying being outside. So tiny houses, even though they're small, they give you the incentive often to actually sit outdoors and enjoy the land that you're sitting on that people definitely are not doing in the suburbs across the street. So that, that's one of the things I really love about living in a tiny house. If you had to do things all over again, what would you do differently? If I had to do it all over again, what would I do differently? Um, I would pay, there's a few things. One is I would pay a little bit more attention to how the rain and the weather has, could possibly infiltrate into like around windows and doors. I do have a problem with my front door. Um, on a really hard rain, water just leaks in really badly and it's a problem I'm gonna have to fix down the line. In most rains, a light rain, a moderate rain, it's no big deal, but in a downpour, yeah, I get some water in this. Um, I have two skylights. I absolutely love the two skylights, but one of them has been leaking and been really difficult to solve that problem. So I would probably think through the flashing and you know the installation of skylights and how to make that really watertight. I did some exterior outlets that have also been ruined because rain has gotten in there, even though they were supposed to be waterproof. So I would put a little more thought into the overhang, trying to maybe make the house a little bit narrower so I could actually have some eaves around it, because I really only have about one inch of eaves, which isn't an eave at all. And there's a little bit of a metal drip edge that comes down and kicks out, you know, to get the drops of water kind of away from the skin of the house. But when the rain's coming down sideways and there's high wind, you know, it's, it's not super effective. So it would be nice to have a little more eaves around the house. That's something I would probably do differently. I would also probably install a mini split refrigerator uh, air conditioner instead of having two window units up in the lofts. That does work, but they're kind of loud and I think a mini split would be more efficient. So that's something I would probably do differently. And then there's lots of little detail things about, you know, some of my electrical outlets have USB ports and I kind of put them in a place where I don't end up using that. So I, I'd like to move some outlets around, but that's a relatively minor thing. Overall, the sizing of the kitchen, the sizing of the bathroom, my desk area for working, I size that all appropriately. Maybe I wouldn't have done so many windows. You know, I essentially have 19 windows, a glass door, and two glass skylights. That was probably a bit excessive, but you know, I didn't want to feel cramped in here, and, and I don't. And having open windows and lots of light coming in and being able to see the greenery through all of my views, um, you know, that, that's worked out really well. So those are, I think, a few of the things that I might redo. But overall, I, I think I got 95% of what I was looking for. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. I absolutely want to hear your questions. If you're considering a tiny house or anything even remotely like a tiny house, I've been in this thing. I've lived in it for four years, but actually prior to hitting the road, uh, leaving Boise, I lived in it, or at least I slept in it, um, for another year before that. So I've got almost five years of tiny house living under my belt. I really like it, but um, you probably have a lot of questions. So leave your comments below. If you are considering a tiny house and you're on the fence about it, um, consider this video a shove. Let me shove you off that fence, get started. Don't worry about the parking situation. I really think that if you have faith that everything will work out, everything will work out. And if you end up in a spot that doesn't work out, that's a beautiful thing about tiny homes. You can find a new spot to park it. You know, if a neighbor's too nosy or the, you know, somebody hassles you about it, go to a slightly more rural area 20 miles down the road and you'll probably be fine, okay? 
Um, you can get started without having all the money. That's what I did. I built it as I could afford to, which as I mentioned, that's why it took about three years to build it. Um, I, that, I think that's a good approach. If you're not in a rush, just start with whatever money you have. Look on Craigslist, you know, try to get your building materials cheap, try to use salvage material wherever possible. So we're, you know, keeping things out of landfills. That's a huge thing. Try to be energy efficient as possible. But I think overall you'll like it. So I would encourage you to go tiny. I think it will improve the overall quality of life. And in another video, I'll address how this tiny house plays into the land that I just purchased and how I'm actually gonna build a homestead in this tiny house is gonna be an integral part of that and may also turn into an Airbnb rental to create supplementary income for me. So there's so many benefits to building a tiny house. So I say, um, thanks for watching these videos. Go for it, you won't regret it.